everyone. My name is Helen Jameson for Zan House Canada. Welcome to this weekend's acronym word. So the word is PRO, P-R-O. It's the short version for professional, okay? So I know there's like lots of words out there that stands for PRO. I've actually posted all the different types of PRO words down there, but I'm focusing on like the short version of being a professional, okay? So like, yeah. Okay, well obviously I'm not a professional boxer. I did that because I wanted to show you that like, obviously if we are a professional or a pro in anything, we need to have the right gear, okay? Well, not these pink boxing gloves, right? They are for boxing, but it's not for professionals. Or, and also I wouldn't be wearing like my baseball cap, but I wanted you to recognize that this P stands for pro, and I want to be a pro because God reminded me, say, Helen, I want you to tell the world and whoever will listen that we are called to be pros for ambassador for Christ. Yes, pro for ambassador for Christ, you get it? We can and we are. Wow, how can I be? Is that confident? Well, God gave me that confidence and I am so floored to share that with you, dear friend. So first acronym that I was brushing my teeth today and to be very honest, God gave me that word because my toothpaste is Pro Enamel and he automatically gave me those three words, P-R-O. You know what it stood originally? He said, you know, Helen, you need to pray, you need to read the orders that I give you. I go, whoa, that is cool, Lord, because you know why? That totally makes sense, right? Because any professional person or pro needs to practice, need to wear the right gear, and need to have an amazing coach that will give us right techniques. And so like, yeah, when he gave me that three word acronym, I knew it, we gotta pray first, ask for help, and then we need to read his word, and we gotta take his orders because God created us, and if you wanna be professionals, ambassador for Christ, we've definitely gotta hear from God himself because he knows what he's doing, right? So that was kinda cool. So I started reading the Bible, and I'm picking it up, and I'm reading a whole bunch of stuff, and you know what came across? Ugh, let me just catch it up, I'm gonna let you hear for yourself. Cause I got my Bible here, and I'm reading it, and I'm reading the Bible, and I talk about like, oh, let me just jump to it. I've got like Psalm chapter 34, verse 15. It says, the eyes of the Lord is toward the righteous and his ears is toward the cries like the righteous. I was thinking, yeah, but yeah, the righteous is great. So Lord, that means you hear people who pray that are righteous. Like, and even in James, which is like in the New Testament where James is like the half brother of Jesus, okay? So I'm gonna just flip to that. So I'm reading in James, right? And then James has actually says, in James chapter 5, verse 16, I have here circled here, and I bookmarked it says, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. The prayer of a righteous person basically is powerful and effective, dear friend. But I'm thinking like, okay, so wow, wow, the pro. So I'm thinking, God says, Helen, did you know that when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, that we become pro ambassadors? and that we become righteous so that when we pray, we are considered the righteous one. So it says, pray righteous one. That's us, dear friend. But I'm thinking, well, how can I have this confidence? Because Lord, I remember when I first received Christ, then you said that none is righteous, no, not single one. That's what you're probably thinking. Maybe whether you have a relationship with God or not, with Jesus Christ as your personal savior, dear friend, or you're thinking, well, there's no one that's righteous. I go, yeah, you're right, there is none righteous. And it doesn't matter what we do, no matter how much money we tithe, how many times we pray, how many times we do good things, it's not good enough. And that's pretty sad, right? Because when we go back and read the Bible, in Romans chapter five, it totally tells me that, actually, is it Romans chapter five? No, let me see, Romans chapter three. Say that. Romans chapter three. Romans chapter three, verse 10. I'm gonna read from verse 10 to 12, okay? So it says, as it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God, all have turned aside together, they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. That's kind of depressing, right? But I know that verse very well because I used to say that, I don't get it, Lord. None of us seek after you. I know that because I didn't seek after God. He sought after me. It's by God's grace, dear friend, that you're listening to this video. It's by God's grace, dear friend, that I'm sitting here taking thine time out and shooting this video and this message for you because it is he who loves us. It is he who perceives our heart. There is none of us who will seek after him until he seeks after us first, dear friend. 
So remember that, okay? And then he makes me turn to 2 Corinthians, which, oh yeah, I bookmarked it here. Yes, it'll be a little faster right here. 2 Corinthians, and I'm flipping here too, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse... What's this verse? I gotta look at it. Sorry, my eyes are a little squinty. It's late right now. Okay, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. This is very, very relevant because remember I just said, none of us are righteous tonight, but we need to have righteousness in us because God's not gonna hear anyone that is righteous and we need to be righteous in order for God to hear our prayers, right? So, okay, what does it say? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, among many other verses. I'm just saying this is the only one, but I love this one, okay? It says, for our sake, okay, he, which is God, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin so that in Christ we become the righteousness of God. Did you catch that? God made Christ who knew no sin to take our sin so that we could be made righteousness for God. So basically this, when Christ died for you, dear friend, and for me, he imputed his righteousness on us. First of all, he took our ugly unrighteousness, our sin upon himself, and then he put his righteousness on us, which is very, very key, because if Christ didn't do that for us, dear friend, we don't have a leg to stand on, seriously. There will be no hope for us. I know that Christ died and he rose again, and his righteousness is imputed on us. And even though we are saved, dear friend, we know that Christ died for us, our past, our present, and our future sin. Does that give us the right to sin? No, we won't because Christ did not abandon us. He has given us and he promised those who believe in Jesus Christ. We trust and believe that he imputed his righteousness on us and then his Holy Spirit lives in us. And that when the Holy Spirit says, you're sinning, make sure you confess. I confess, I say. First John 1, 9 says this, if we confess our sin, our God, he is faithful and he is just. He will purify us from all unrighteousness. You catch that? God will purify us from all unrighteousness when we confess our sins. So therefore, even though we're saved, we gotta confess it, dear friend. We know that we have a bad habit, we need to confess it because we want to continue to be pro ambassadors for Christ, not only sharing the gospel and sharing this great news for others, but sharing for other people who wander from their faith. And that's also in James, in James, the last part of James, I didn't read out yet, okay? So just read the book of James. Just read the whole entire book of James because James is like the half brother of Jesus and he didn't believe that Jesus was God before. He thought he was crazy, but because he witnessed it, that Christ rose from the dead and he was resurrected and he saw him with his flesh and blood and he finally believed that his half brother was really God himself. So read the book of James, lots and lots of truth there. He says that we who are righteous have effective, powerful prayers and we are able to help others because when we pray and we confess it to each other different sins, dear friend, we can have effective prayers. We who will and are righteous because of Jesus Christ. God hears our prayer, dear friends. When we confess our sins, so there's no barriers at blocking it. We can pray and claim that confidently because our God, our Father, will hear our prayers if we ask anything in Jesus Christ's name, amen? So please, trust that. If you don't believe and trust it, pray today. Read those verses that I just put there on those con in those notes right there. Share this word to someone else and say, hey, did you know that? You are a pro, you are a pro. We are pro ambassadors for Christ, yes. Pray, righteous one. I want you to pray, righteous one. Pray for me, pray for others, pray for the world, because all that stuff is going on right now is pretty crazy right now. Pray, righteous one. We are called to be pro in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for sharing this.